One of our largest and most commonly observed solitary wasps is Ammophila procera. In North America, detailed observations of Ammophila began with George Peckham's work in the late 1800s. Peckham and others before him, notably Fabre, the famous French entomologist, were pioneering wasp watchers, present-day naturalists seeking to rediscover the same behaviors that Peckham and Fabre observed are in for a treat. Ammophila wasps prey on various caterpillars and rarely saw flies. It is often the sight of the wasp transporting her prey that calls our attention to the ongoing drama. The female has prepared her burrow in advance of the hunt. Once the paralyzed prey is properly positioned, loose fill placed earlier as a temporary closure is removed from the entrance. The caterpillar's one-way journey is now complete. For Ammophila, however, the work continues. While she has successfully provided the resources required for her developing offspring, her role as protector may have just begun. Kleptoparasitic flies have literally been following the wasp's progress and are honing in on her prize. Even as Ammophila works to fill the nest shaft, the flies deposit their wiggling larvae on the lip of the burrow. Successful fly larvae will drop onto the caterpillar and eventually discover the wasp's newly hatched young. The immature wasp will then be dispatched with the acquisition caterpillar ultimately providing food for the next generation of flies. While the dice have been rolled, the wasp must still complete her labors by filling the burrow and camouflaging the site itself. The intricacies of this behavior are truly extraordinary. These two have been studied in detail and have provided grist for debates about evolution, instinct, and intelligence. The contemporary investigations into the very nature of intelligence, animal behavior, and even free will will likely be informed by this or similar scenarios. For the naturalist, Ammophila, if nothing else, is a treasure awaiting discovery. If Hymenopterus were to create a solitary wasp hall of fame, Sphex ichneumonius would certainly claim an honored place. Large and flashy, the great golden digger has been studied by a host of wasp researchers. Here a female, top right, and male, nectaret globe flower. While nesting sites for Sphex are varied, this sandy road through open habitat is typical. An accommodating subject, most will continue on about their business, even with an observer at close quarters. Note how this wasp employs her legs, as well as her mandibles, to move dirt from the burrow. Below ground side branches, each with a single nest cell, are excavated off the main vertical shaft. A variety of orthopterans serve as hosts, and typical among these is the cone-headed grasshopper, or katydid. 
Fixed action patterns are typical of many organisms, and as a rule, Sphex will position her prey in precise fashion. If somehow the prey is accidentally or purposefully moved, the wasp invariably repositions her prey before internment. Excavating burrows is a labor-intensive business, and especially so if the wasp chooses a compacted substrate. One long-term study established that the wasp spends over an hour and a half to prepare the site for its first host. The same research project established that while some ichneumonious females are content to do their own work, others use the existing burrow of a sister wasp for their own purposes. While this sharing by the intruder is at times a successful strategy, chance meetings of the adults typically ends in a tussle, with one or the other being evicted. Ultimately, the wasp that does the finishing work is the winner.